I'm making a new series of videos that will allow me to delve heavily into the Scream franchise to bring you guys some of the deleted, removed and original scenes that were intended to be included in the movies but didn't see the light of day. Most of this information in these videos will be taken from original drafts, scripts and more from the franchise but also from discussions the cast and crew have had and some of the behind the scenes features that were provided with the whole media releases. To make sure you don't miss out on this awesome Scream trivia be sure to hit subscribe and sign up for notifications so you don't miss a single update. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at a huge deleted scene from the first movie in 1996. Not only was this a great scene in my opinion, but a discussion from the scene is actually continued towards the third act of the movie that simply blew my mind when I read through it. It added so much context to that specific scene that now I think I will view the conversation differently. The deleted scene actually involves Rose McGowan's Tatum Riley. Her scenes in the movie were pretty iconic, especially her death scene at the hands of the garage door cat flap. However, there was another specific scene that was written for Tatum which included an almost near encounter with Ghostface way before her eventual death. The scene actually took place in the supermarket just after Sydney and Tatum discussed Billy and the audience is shown a glimpse of a ghost face dressed individual stalking the pair. For many years, fans have speculated the existence of this character with suggestions ranging from it's a random person dressed up, it's Billy and even it's Roman Bridger. This deleted sequence from the movie actually highlights the ghost face in the supermarket was absolutely either Billy or Stu as the significance of the character is pretty felt during this deleted scene. Without further ado, let's read through the actual deleted scene. Billy and his penis don't deserve you, said Tatum. Sidney grabs some chips and salsa from the shelf. Down the aisle, through the storefront window, the ghost mask figure still stands watching their every move. Sid pushes the car out of the glass door with Tatum riding it. The ghost mask figure is nowhere to be found. Sidney. What do you think about when you're having sex? Tatum, with Stu, there's little time to stop and reflect, but sometimes, before, to relax and get in the mood. I think about Grant Goodeve. Sid pushes the cart and Tatum across the street. Who? asks Sidney. Tatum, Grant Goodeve, the oldest brother on eight is enough. Remember that show? He was the one who lived off alone. He would come around every now and then with his guitar and sing eight is enough to fill our lives with love. He had all these brain dead sisters and that idiot brother from Charles in charge. God, I was in love with Grant. He was so hot. The show came on every day after school right during my puberty years. Grant Goodeve was very instrumental in my maturing as a woman. Sydney, how does that get you in the mood with Stu? Tatum, during foreplay, I sing the theme song to myself. Eight is enough to fill our lives with love. It's a real turn on. Sydney, no way. Tatum, Grant wrote the song himself. I'm convinced the lyrics had a secret meaning. Eight is enough. Sid pushes the cart up to do his jeep. Tatum hops off. Sydney, what secret meaning? Like a satanical thing? Tatum, watch the show, Sid. His basket is bigger than the one you're pushing. Tatum, said Sydney. Oh, Sydney, what? A guy can talk tits till he's dead, but the minute you mention an eight inch weenie, watch out. Sydney stops just short of a laugh. Tatum pulls the back jeep door, loading the groceries in. Behind her, the ghost mask figure appears just out of their sight behind the jeep's open back door. Tatum, there's that sense of humour. I knew it still existed. Oh Sid, let's have some fun tonight. Sydney, deal. Sydney moves to the back door and closes it shut when from behind, Dewey stands. Sydney jumps, startled. Dewey, you girls ready? Sydney, yeah. Looks like I'm going to be your personal bodyguard tonight, Sid, said Dewey. No, Dewey, you'll ruin the whole night, said Tatum. Sorry, police orders. I'll stay out of the way, I promise. Shit, said Tatum. Tatum kicks the shopping cart out of the way blindly. It rolls down the road by itself, gaining speed on a decline, running smack into the ghost mask figure, who stops the cart cold with one hand. So let's process this for a moment. That specific line from Scream 1996. You know, a set of lungs like that, she should be. Yeah. Tits. See? 
now has so much more meaning thanks to this deleted moment, the way Tatum challenges the notion that guys can discuss women in such a derogatory way, yet she isn't allowed to do it about men, is what prompts the tits see comment from her at Stu's house. What's fascinating about this is whoever was under the ghost face costume in the supermarket sequence almost came face to face with Tatum, to the point where she literally kicked the supermarket trolley towards him unknowingly. During my rewatch of the scene, I noticed something about this sequence. This level of stalking towards Tatum and Sydney actually was a homage to the original Halloween in 1978, when Michael Myers actively stalks Laurie Strode and Annie Brackett. I hadn't realised this until I saw this scene. Tatum presented Annie-esque similarities, while Sydney was more of a good girl like Laurie Strode. The fact that the pair were then followed to a house party where Tatum was also killed inside a garage is exactly the same pattern of events that unfolded in Halloween 1978. My mind is honestly blown by this. Removing this scene, I kind of get it. It takes up time, but I think the inclusion of this scene is so relevant today. Tatum's point about the way guys aren't judged for peering over females in movies in comparison to women is so ahead of its time that I feel it would have really held up well if it were included in the movie today. I also think Rose McGowan would have delivered perfectly in this particular scene. What do you guys think of this scene? Would you have wanted it included in the movie or do you think it's pointless? Share your thoughts and opinions below. Thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and stay tuned for more great Scream content on the way.